So in this video, we're going to be talking about the 12 reasons why cheaters don't want to talk about the affair. Number one, to protect their partner from further hurt and pain. See, the reality is what that person did hurts. There's no question about it. There's a whole lot of emotional pain that a person experiences when they've discovered an affair. But then for the unfaithful partner to go through all of the gory details is uncomfortable for that person and they know that it's just going to cause further hurt and pain for their partner. So to avoid hurting their spouse, they will hold on to those truths for dear life. They will carry it to the grave. They don't want to do it because they already know what impact or they believe what impact it will have on their spouse. So that's one of the reasons why they lie, why they omit the truth, uh, why they give false impressions, um, why they deceive, or, or why they just shut down all forms of conversation to avoid further hurt and pain. Reason number two, to avoid the consequences of what may happen if the truth comes out. Here's the reality. There's a fear that if I tell you the truth, I may lose my marriage, I may lose my family, I may lose everything that's attached to being in a relationship with you. Our lifestyle, our community, our shared friends, our reputation. And for fear of losing those things, I'd rather not tell you the truth. Number three, it's quite common that a person doesn't want to talk about the details of the affair because they're trapped in between guilt and shame. Now, guilt is a negative feeling that a person experiences based upon the hurt that they've caused someone else. So every time I think about what I've done to you, it pains me. When I see what you're going through, oh, it just really gets up under my skin and I feel horrible about it. So the last thing I want to do is address the issues and talk about it. But then I'm also battling with shame and shame is a negative feeling uh, that I may have based upon how I see myself. And I beat myself up all the time. I struggle with the fact that I actually did this. And to avoid guilt and shame, I'd rather not think about it. I'd rather not talk about it. I'd rather not engage you in any type of back and forth dialogue that will conjure up all of those emotions again. So I just want to get rid of the negative feeling. The fourth reason why a person doesn't want to talk about the affair is because they're compulsive liars. And they have a history and a track record of always lying and so what happens is if you've been lying and lying and lying, eventually your lies catch up with you. And sometimes you don't remember the lies told last month, last week, last night. And so now to have a continual conversation, uh, you may wind up contradicting what you've said in the past, which then opens up another can of worms because it proves that you're still holding on to truths that you are not willing to share. Another aspect of the lie is the minimizing that occurs when a conversation takes place. So typically if a person says, it was only, it was just, declaring what never happened, a lot of times those aren't true. And so there's a tendency to engage in the trickle truth. The trickle truth is pieces and parts of truth that come out slowly but surely over the course of time. And a lot of times that's done to avoid the negative impact of telling it all. And so much like peeling off a band-aid, you know how, how painful that can be when you're peeling it off slowly, you're actually pulling on the skin, you're pulling on the hair, and it's a more painful process than just ripping that band-aid off. Well, typically people have the tendency to engage in conversations about the affair the same way. They give pieces of truth over the course of time, which actually makes matters worse because it re-triggers the partner and it's almost like you're experiencing a new betrayal with every new truth. And even though it's attached to the same situation, it's new to your partner, which makes it even more challenging to overcome. And it sets a person back in terms of their ability to trust. But the minimization is a huge thing that people engage in. So we never had sex when the truth is they did. We only had sex four times when it could have been 20, 30 times. It was only an emotional affair when it was a lot deeper than that. I really didn't know them or care for them or have feelings for them when it was really more intense. And so people minimize and deny these truths because once again, they don't want to make the matter worse. Number six, to avoid confrontation. Every time we talk about it, it seems like we wind up in a fight. It becomes a World War III uh, level of engagement of conflict between the two partners and one attempts to avoid any type of confrontation at all costs. And so that's why they don't engage and share those details. Another thing, they may fear what consequences may come to their spouse 
if the spouse finds out because maybe they know that their spouse has an anger problem. Maybe they fear the spouse engaging in some type of dialogue or conflict with the affair partner and they're looking at the potential of what can go wrong if these truths come out. And so that is one of the reasons why they don't tell, to avoid all types of confrontation. Number seven, they want to keep conducting the affair that they're currently in. See, as long as I don't have to talk about it and reveal all the details and show you all the things that I've actually done, I'm actually covering and protecting the current affair that I'm actually in. And so a lot of times the affair isn't actually over. And the more I talk about it, the more revealing it becomes. So to avoid blowing up what I currently have that I want to maintain, I will shut down any type of conversation to avoid being discovered. Number eight. The unfaithful partner is now foggy on the details. See, if this affair happened months ago, possibly years ago, uh, the first thing that the unfaithful partner wants to do is compartmentalize everything about that affair and store it away. And if I don't have to think about it, I don't have to remember it, I don't have to recite it, I don't have to internalize it in any way, I just want to release it. And so when the conversations come back up, they're foggy. They don't really know or they choose not to know. And so one of the common responses is, I, you know, I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And the more you say, I don't know to a person who has a need to know, the more it triggers them, the more, it's, the more it sets them back, the more it keeps them in a stuck place. And so whenever you're having a conversation and you can't remember the facts, it's a process that takes place because sometimes you have to uncover or dig into what has been buried some time ago for sake of not wanting to deal with the pain. Number nine, D-Day has come and gone. See, D-Day is the day of discovery. That is the day that all the truth comes out. That is the day that the unfaithful partner, if they were completely honest, fessed up and revealed everything. And so now that that day has come and gone, that's exactly how they approach it. It's come and gone. I don't want to deal with it anymore. I don't want to feel the hurt. And so I've got to be able to move forward and so therefore hate the idea of engaging in the conversation again. What they don't realize is that there's a process that the betrayed spouse has to go through to get the clarity and the closure that they need. And so in that position, this particular individual may want to have several conversations from different perspectives to gain clarity in ways they never had before. Think about this. If you've ever read a book, have you ever read a book and got great information out of it and then read it again? and actually saw something you didn't see the first time and then read it again and then got a level of insight that you didn't get the two previous times and then read it again. And so the point is every time you read it, every time you watch and learn something, you're in a different season in life, a different perspective. You're listening with new eyes and new ears and a new interpretation. And so there's clarity to be gained in multiple conversations. And so you have to have, a, as the unfaithful partner, the sensitivity uh, to where your spouse is to have multiple conversations till that all begins to come out. Just think about a fruit, squeezing the juice out of a fruit until it's completely dry. That's where the, that's where the betrayed partner is in terms of squeezing the truth out of a conversation until it all comes out. So there's got to be a level of patience but then there's got to come to a point where both of you mutually decide to close the chapter and to move on into your healing. And so it's quite possible that having this conversation will come up periodically, sporadically, at times when you don't anticipate it, in times when you don't desire it. But it's necessary for the process until you enter into what is called full disclosure, which is a completely different process. But during the season of discovery, you will have multitudes of conversations. So D-Day is not just about a day, it is a season, it is a period of time. That's what you need to embrace. Number 10, unwilling to take ownership and responsibility for what was done. See, as long as the unfaithful partner doesn't have to talk about it, then there's no conversations of accountability, responsibility, what must be done to help the spouse heal. And so shutting down the conversation relieves a person of any responsibility of anything. And so that's one of the things that they want to do because they feel like, listen, it's over. I made a decision not to cheat anymore. That should be enough. But there's a lot of residue that takes place when an affair happens. And if you don't realize that you have to show up differently and that the nature of your relationship is different, and now you're entering into a new season with new responsibilities and new expectations, if you haven't embraced that, you're going to have a difficult time in your marriage while you see your partner continue to hurt. 
Number 11, the unfaithful partner is honoring a pact that they have with the affair partner. Now here's the reality. If the unfaithful partner is in a relationship with a married person, then both of you have something to lose. You may have your family to lose. He or she may have their family to lose. And so to keep the secret keeps both families intact. But once the information is revealed, who knows what the impact will be on the affair partner. So it's more of a protection that you have for the affair partner than you have for your own spouse. And oftentimes when you don't reveal those details, that's exactly how the betrayed spouse feel, that you're protecting the other person at your own spouse's expense. And number 12, the unfaithful partner hasn't accepted the fact that they actually cheated. You know, it's really interesting because a lot of couples get stuck on this one point because there's different definitions, different interpretations, different perspectives as to what the behavior actually was. And so while the betrayed spouse looks at it as a full betrayal and an affair, uh, the unfaithful partner may say, no, it wasn't an affair at all. I only had sex with them one time. That couldn't have been an affair. Or it was, it was just emotional conversations. That certainly isn't an affair. And couples get stuck with their own interpretation and definition um, as what the behavior actually was. And so one of the ways that I'd like to help couples through that struggle is to say, listen, whether you wanna call it infidelity, cheating, adultery, or an affair, the fact of the matter is there has been a betrayal. Now that betrayal may either be emotional or sexual, but a betrayal called by a different name ultimately is still the same. And if it sets your spouse back, if it breaks the foundation of the family, if it's created a vulnerability in the relationship, if it's caused mistrust, unforgiveness, and a completely disconnect, and if, it, and if it's threatening the potential of your relationship in terms of whether you stay together or not, call it what you want, the impact is still the same. But the spouse oftentimes wants you to take ownership. And until you take ownership for what is done, it keeps them in a stuck place that they aren't able to move forward. And so these are the reasons why a person would not want to discuss the details of the affair. So our recommendation is if you're in a stuck place and you're struggling to have conversations with your spouse about the details of the affair for the purpose of moving forward, seek help. Seek someone outside yourself that can help guide and facilitate a conversation that can get you to, to a healthier place.